Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to our service of worship here at Christ Church Tamworth of Trinity Parish. Welcome also to those who will be watching this service online. Today is Harvest Thanksgiving. Let's begin our service. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Please stand for our hymn number 262, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. Raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in ere the winter storms begin. God our Maker doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come. Raise the song of harvest home. All oh, the world is God's <coughs> own field. Fruit unto his praise. To yield wheat and weeds together sown. Unto joy or sorrow grown. First the blade and then the ear. And the full corn shall appear. Lord of harvest, grant that we wholesome grain and pure may be. For the Lord our God shall come and shall take his harvest home. From his field shall in that day all offenses purge away. Give his angels charge at last. In the fire the weeds to cast. But the fruitful ears to store. In his garner evermore. Even so, Lord, quickly come. To thy final harvest home, gather thou thy people in, free from sorrow, free from sin, there forever purified, in thy presence to abide. Come with all thine angels, come. Raise a glorious harvest home. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you, to you all, all hearts, hearts are, open, are open, all desires, all desires are known, known, and from you, and from you no, no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Spirit that, that we, we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the call out of the day, let us pray. Creator, Creator of, of the fruitful, fruitful earth, earth, you made you us made stewards, stewards of all, of all things. things. Give, Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well. That, that the whole human family, today and in generations to come, to come May with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. The first reading, no, I'm sorry, I'm not doing the first reading. <laughs> the first reading is from Deuteronomy 26, verses 1 to 11. 
When you have come into the land of the Lord, that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling place for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Armenian was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. With a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders, and he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 100, and we can read responsibly at the asterisk. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His faithfulness endures from age to age. And together, God our Father, you have created us as your people, and you sustain us with your hand. Help us always to give you thanks, for you alone are worthy of thanksgiving and praise, and an honor now and forever. Please remain seated for the second piece. The second reading is taken from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. If the congregation would please stand for our gradual hymn. Today is number 259, For the Fruit of All Creation. Thanks be to God. Here 
Thanks be stowed on every nation. Thanks be to God for the plowing, sowing, reaping, silent growth. While we are sleeping, future needs in earth safekeeping. Thanks be to God in the just reward. of caring for the hungry and despairing in the harvest we are sharing God's will is done for the harvest of the Spirit thanks be to God for the good we all inherit Thanks be to God for the wonders that astound us, for the truths that still confound us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you were looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you giving, going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. love so much all of the beautiful sights and sounds of this festive time of year. The bright reds and golden yellows of turning leaves are all around us now, and more so further north near Perry Sound at Rosso, where we were last weekend for the interment of ashes of Michael Jackson. And the abundance of the harvest is also seen everywhere. We have so much to be thankful for here in Canada. It is fitting that our hearts should be filled with thankfulness at this time of year for a good harvest and abundance everywhere. On the journey to Rosso and back, I was very thankful that the fast charging infrastructure today is much better than it was 
uh, two years ago and considerably better also than it was even just one year ago. So I'm thankful for that. That's my car charging right in front of those, those uh, beautiful, beautiful full colors uh, at Perry Sound. I have spoken before about how this is a time of year that I have loved sharing with the international students and refugees whom my wife Deborah helped transition to Canada over the past, uh, well, it's 18 years now. It is a joy to me to see their faces light up at discoveries of life in Canada. The blessings of a kitchen full of food are not taken for granted everywhere in the world. There are still many places where fear of starvation haunts, and even in our own region, we do find some in need through no fault of their own. Our own new legacy center was founded to help such people. And during the pandemic, the work has continued thanks to the Lord. And thanks also to the generosity of the spirit that God stirs up in people's hearts. These are recent donations to New Legacy Center. We see the abundance on the shelves of New Legacy Center here donated for those who need it. The Old Testament text from Deuteronomy today concludes by telling the people of God to bring the first fruit of the ground before the Lord. And then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. I love that. Deuteronomy instructs God's people, Israel, to share the bounty with the aliens. Family members are assumed as part of this in, in, the, uh, in the words, in your house, because the scripture says, in your house, it's assumed that they mean uh, that it is, it, is, it is meant your family members, but aliens are added in there uh, as something that perhaps uh, had to be spelled out as such because otherwise people might tend to forget about them and just leave them out of the picture. Deuteronomy assumes there will be aliens living among the people of Israel. God wants his, his called out people to share the abundance with the aliens too and allow them to share in the blessing that we have here. And of course, by the way, need I say it, uh, we're not talking about aliens from other planets. It's not a kind of a science fiction thing. Uh, that's a different kind of alien. My wife Deborah's greatest joy was to share food with those from other countries who were far away from home, the sojourners in the land, as the Bible called them, or uh, in other texts, the aliens. This to her was a happy coincidence of doing something that God commanded so long ago, but which also becomes a source of joy for us today, sharing Canadian customs and enabling others to be blessed by them as well. Simple things like explaining how and why we used the cranberry sauce together with Turkey. Uh, for people from a lot of other countries, we discovered cranberry sauce is not a thing. Uh, and Turkey would not necessarily have been uh, something that they ate on special occasions either. Uh, but the idea of putting them together was a new thing and discovering that uh, was a joy to so many students from all over the world. And you can see the cranberry sauce there in the foreground. Many times she invited students and refugees from other countries to a big Thanksgiving dinner around our table at our home, often with over 20 people in attendance, blending together family members with people from Congo, Myanmar, Ethiopia, Sudan, Nigeria, Zambia, France, Germany, Sweden, Brazil, Mexico, over 30 countries through the years. And this year, uh, I have one also from the Philippines adding to our list of countries. For us, Thanksgiving was an opportunity to give thanks to God and share that thanks around uh, blessing people 
with that abundance as well. Now, when you offer free food, there is always a possibility that you may attract some who come only because of the free food. That has always been a problem in every culture, and we find the same happening in Jesus' day. After the miraculous multiplication of the loaves and fishes, crowds were looking for Jesus. When they found Jesus on the other side of Galilee, they asked, Rabbi, when did you come here? But Jesus saw through them. He knew they were only in search of free food, not even really looking for signs. Now, looking for signs can have problems of its own, but if it is motivated by true love of God's kingdom, then it can be genuine and thus is more honorable than freeloading. Jesus discerned the true reason for their searching him down. But notice that he does not send them all away packing. After all, it may be possible that God's grace will work in the hearts of some who started off only as freeloaders. Who knows which direction things may go? We don't. So Jesus tells them not to work for the food that perishes. He used it as a teaching moment. Not to work for the food that perishes, but to work for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. They ask, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus says, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. But they wanted a sign for proof, like the manna in the wilderness. Jesus said, it was not Moses that gave you bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you the true bread, which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So then they wanted it. They say, give us this bread always. Now they were perhaps starting to get the picture that the kind of bread Jesus was talking about was not necessarily the same as physical bread, but has to do with following the one whom God has sent into the world. So Jesus answers them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. In John 4, verse 34, Jesus had told them previously, My food is to do the will of him who sent me. That was in a, a prelude chapter to this uh, John chapter 6. But that passage is a key passage for helping us understand what Jesus is saying here. If we think of going where God has sent us as the best kind of food, then we have come into the place where Jesus was and is. Doing his will is better than eating even the best tasting food in the world. It is better than eating our fill of the loaves. No one can find true and lasting solace in food or drink alone. Not a peace that lasts. Not a peace that is constructive and helpful to other people. It is only if God opens my eyes to see that his provision for me is complete, that I have felt released from fears that there won't be enough. Do you have a long-standing fear that there won't be enough? The Great Depression left that fear on many of the children of the 1930s and even the 1940s. Yet even those who grew up in the years of abundance in the 50s and 60s and on up had a secondary wave of that fear instilled in them through their parents, a fear that has been lessened by abundance since the 1950s, but still it's never far away from many folk today. Today's epistle reading says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It is good to rejoice and give thanks to the Lord. True rejoicing is inherently genuine, and it is real. When we ponder on whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, pure, pleasing, commendable, excellent, praiseworthy, 
we have a better mind frame for handling the recurrent cycle of depressing thoughts and negativity which plague, plagues so many people today. And meditating on whatever is good and praiseworthy lifts us up, gives us the peace of God, a deeper peace than any drug or chemical the world can give. This is a powerful word against depression which plagues so many people today. Recent research has discovered the health benefits of keeping a gratitude journal in which you record each day things that you have to be thankful for that day. This is one piece of evidence that the spiritual benefits of a biblical principle are very real and very much in this world. This piece is not, however, some kind of escapism from the troubles of this world and its evils. It is not an escape. Rather, it is what gives us strength in a moment of complete rest to face those evils head on and speak God's truth into them, to put them at bay, at least insofar as it lies within our power to do. For example, when we pray, when we vote, and when we write letters, when we speak out for justice at a public meeting, when we act to help the poor and those in need, when we act to preserve the life-giving properties of the land as God's stewards in the garden. These things God wants us to do. But a Christian does these things from a ground that is based in the bread that never fades away, but endures to eternal life. Whenever we feel hunger or thirst, we should remember the true bread that came down from heaven. His sacrifice for us on the cross was real, not ethereal. Real and physical, not spiritual, if by spiritual we mean disembodied. It is only if it is real in this world that any of the world's dark realities could be changed for the better. And this, we trust, has happened in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in his birth, the incarnation, in his life and teachings, by his death and resurrection here in this world. He is there to satisfy our inner hunger every hour. May we become sensitive to his spirit at work in our lives. And may, may we all enjoy the blessings of giving thanks for all things. Amen. Please stand for the Niacin Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty.
Please be seated for prayers of the people. Today we'll be using litany number 19, which is in your book of alternative services. At this time, as we start our prayers of the people, we pray for our Bishop Michael Olton for his leadership and our priest Ian Ritchie for his guidance. We also on this day pray in our calendar of our prayer for in our own diocese for St. Luke's of Kingston, the Venerable Bill Clark, priest in charge, and all peoples. In our world cycle of prayer today, we're praying for the Church of the Province of Central Africa and peoples. Let us give thanks to God our Father always and for everything saying, we thank you, Lord. For the beauty and the wonder of creation, we thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ, we thank you, Lord. For our daily food, for our home, our families and friends, we thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love, we thank you, Lord. For health, strength, and skill to work, and for leisure to rest and play, we thank you, Lord. And at this time, we pray for those that are on our parish list. We pray for Ann Jackson, Diane Harris, Ken Harris, Elizabeth Weir, Leanne King, Reg Watson, Gloria and David Hamilton, Sheldon Graham, Ian and Marin Thompson, Amanda Pauls, Suresh and Bernadette Uguera, Cynthia and Stanley Graham, Brian Weiss, Kathy Pauls, Jay Behrens, Ginny Graydon, Debbie Harton, Debbie Martin, Tom Burke, Kathy Brown, Megan Goodwin and family, Jim and Patty Young, Tony Sapira, Ruth Dale, Chris Smith, Margaret Kinney, Beatrice Brown, and Dorothy Cronk. For those who are brave and courageous, patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, we thank you, Lord. For those, for all who pursue peace, justice, and truth, we thank you, Lord. And today, we especially give thanks for those of our congregation and all those people that we're sharing Thanksgiving with. We thank you, Lord. For Cora Reed, Michael Jackson, and Barry Wheeler, and all the saints and whose suffering have reflected the light of Christ, we thank you, Lord. And now we have a prayer for Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today, including those who have died. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Confession and Absolution. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet your neighbor with the sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Our offertory hymn will be hymn number 666. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. the symbols of our labor, our labor and love, which, which we offer you this day, day. In, in the name, name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer number two. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and heaven earth are full of your, full glory. Of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name, name of the Lord. Hosanna, Lord. Hosanna in, in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. 
When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit, and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, we many, many are one, one body, body, for we all share in the one, in the bread. one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
prayer after communion together. God of our hope, in this Eucharist we find the source of all your blessings. Nourished in these holy mysteries, may we with our lives give you continual thanks and praise. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The announcements. The main announcement is Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And we certainly hope and pray you will have a joyous and happy Thanksgiving, a season of Thanksgiving with family, with friends, and uh, if possible, uh, if you can invite some aliens to join you, <laughs> that would be good. Ian? Are there any announcements from the floor? Yes. I just wanted to let everyone know that I had Dorothy Cronk on our list because I ran into her in the Walmart the other day and was speaking with her, and she had a bad car accident in May. And she just got a new car back finally, and she said she's just starting to heal better. So we can remember in her prayer she wasn't has any super side effects from it. But uh, she sent her thanksgiving to all of us too here at the church. So I decided to let you know that. Thank you, Tony. Dorothy, Dorothy Crock. If there are no other announcements. There are no other announcements. I guess we can. Okay. Yeah, sing. Our hymn is hymn 258. We plow the fields and scatter. We plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. But it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow in winter, the warmth to swell the grain. The breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. And thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all his love. He only is the maker. Yes. 
descend from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all his love. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.